Hi everybody. Thanks for coming back to read a book with me. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that you always know when I have another great book for you off my little bookshelf. Today's book is a very silly book and it's called The Most Serious Fart by Mike Bender, illustrated by Chuck Dillon. In a not-so-quiet neighborhood deep in the bowels lived the most serious fart with monogrammed towels. His name was Siegfried, never a smile on his face. He only listened to Beethoven and always carried a briefcase. Most farts lived in clusters, but Siegfried lived alone. He didn't have any friends, nobody to share in a scone. He thought he had no choice but to live his life this way. Other farts were just fools who delighted in disarray. Siegfried had held his gripe long enough. It was time to make a stink. Farts should be taken seriously like a sneeze or a blink. Thanks to his fellow farts, nothing really mattered. Mocked even by babies, their reputation shattered. The Board of Old Farts held a meeting once a year where farts of all smells wafted in through the rear. It was a chance to be heard to truly speak their minds, but most came for the after party and to shake their behinds. Siegfried had come for a debate, taking a pad and pointer from his case. He prepared four arguments to push the fart to its proper place. First, a fart should no longer depart from the depths of the derriere, but rather a more elevated spot like the mouth, eyes, or even nose hair. Derriere? That's just a fancy word for butt. <laughs> I said, but. Second, the telltale tooting sound was a dreaded cacophony. It needed a more dignified tone, like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Third, the stinky smell of rotten eggs must be rethought and replaced. Siegfried preferred a more refreshing sense, lemongrass and minty fresh toothpaste. Lastly, Siegfried asked the board to reconsider the fart's very own name. A four-letter word like butt and poop brought them nothing but shame. So he offered a new title that suggested nobility, and dropping a bomb, he presented the Far Fluffity. Finishing his long-winded plea with nothing left to say, Siegfried was feeling confident he had blown the old farts away. The board quibbled and squabbled but ended in a stalemate. They decided to let the town's farts decide the farts' fate. To the mic each fart floated, blasting ideas Siegfried promoted. I'm proud of my tooting vibrations. They've been in my family for generations. I don't care if babies laugh at me. Their little giggles fill me with glee. I don't want to be a far poof fit. Oh, for fart's sake, I can't even say it. Hooray for the bootay! Hooray for the bootay! Hooray for the bootay! Siegfried turned his back while everyone joined the chant until the eldest fart hit the gavel and ripped into a rousing rant. Well, Siegfried, your fellow farts have spoken clearly about these opinions which you've held so dearly. You should be proud of who you are, not who you think that you should be. One day we will all run out of gas, so don't take yourself so seriously. As Siegfried considered his fellow farts, he began to rethink his position. Maybe the other farts weren't such fools. Perhaps they cared about tradition. 
And so Siegfried formally withdrew his debate, a cause for everyone in the room to celebrate. Siegfried even agreed to attend the far festival that night to make sure everyone knew he'd butt out of this fight. Although he didn't throw a jig or join the electric slide, he saw one thing they took seriously, flexing their fun side. Siegfried still listened to Beethoven and enjoyed tea and scones, but he did it with plenty of friends and with grins instead of groans. The rear end. Thank you so much for reading that very silly book with me. I hope you come back next time for another book off my little bookshelf. See you next time. Bye!